For the most basic of switches, the basic concept is that we've got some output B, that's our button maybe we'll call it, and when there, the switch is open, we have a direct path down to ground and nothing else. Since there's no current, uh, there's, no, there's no voltage drop over here, so the voltage drop is zero, and so we know that the output B is going to be zero. And so you could imagine when it's open, the output waveform is going to look like this. In an ideal world, when I close this switch and put it down to here, and make it closed, I now have a direct path to power, and so now the voltage is going to go high, and we, in an ideal world, we would see a behavior like this, and we would see it go from zero to a high voltage instantaneously and make a nice little rectangular graph like that. Unfortunately, in, in the real world, what actually happens is something a little bit different, basic concept is still the same, but we have one extra consideration, and that when I switch my, my switch from this open position to this closed position, what happens is it actually bounces a few times. So it goes up and down, up and down, and so it either it connects and then disconnects, it connects and disconnects, and my waveform, rather than looking like a nice little square waveform, looks something like this. before it settles and has a constant one. Now in this lab you will be using this a, a switch to be your clock. So the problem is rather than having a single clock edge you might have one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, maybe thousands of clock edges instead of having a single one. And that makes it impossible to debug. So what we, we're going to do is build a debouncer circuit that looks something like this. It's rather simple. It's got the same basic structures. You've got this is the switch that we showed you earlier, and you've got another one down at the bottom, down here. And then all you have is we slapped an SR latch onto here. And now the SR latch is important because basically what it does is it remembers which input had a 1 most recently. And so we're going to use that to our advantage, and this is what's going to smooth out our circuit. And so this will be, um, we'll call this our S and our R. When R is one more recently, the output B is going to be zero. When S is one more recently, the output B will be one. <clears throat> so let's suppose neither of these co is connected. What we have here is that both of these inputs, R and S, are zero. And so if you remember from your circuits, when I have an SR latch and it's both zero, the output will be a hold. So it's going to stay the same as long as neither of these is connected to the switch. And now let's suppose I connect my switch like this and I have, I'm going to have a wire coming out of my power and I'm going to plug it into my R terminal. That's going to change this to a one. And now my circuit is going to store a zero and then this zero and zero is going to reinforce that and this is going to be a one down here. Now, what's going to happen is when I start moving this guy, so maybe it's here, this 1 is going to change to a 0, and I'm going to hold. My B is going to stay a constant value during the transition from R to S. Then when it gets to S, S will get a 1 instantaneously. It's going to force this guy to a 0. This 0 is going to come around, and my output B is going to become a 1. And I'm going to get a nice, hard, edge, it's going to go up to a 1, and then if it ever does bounce, it goes up and then down, up and then down. This 1 is just going to change between a 1 and a 0, 1 and a 0, 1 and a 0, and it's either going to be 0, 1, which is going to keep it at a 1, or 0, 0, which will be a hold, and so we get a nice hard clock edge like this.